Well, here's a little video about uh, a little electronic device from Japan called the Benesse Pocket Challenge. Um, I'm going to make this a really short video because it's not a game system. It's not a video game system. Uh, Benesse is a cram school uh, company, chain of companies, uh, and uh, they, I guess they sell these to parents uh, of middle schoolers in Japan so that they can uh, study on the train, at home, wherever, and uh, take little tests on this device. So uh, this thing has uh, high, uh, middle school science uh, units in, on a cartridge. It has middle school English. Yeah, second, second year middle school. And then finally, uh, this is social studies, I guess. So, um, well, maybe I'll put in the science unit and uh, give you a little demonstration. But probably most of these questions I just can't understand, so I'll, I'll make it quick. All right, hope you can see that. Well, um, you know, it's got these these buttons that are all labeled. I guess this is the action, and this is these are all back pass. You know, I, I, I give up sort of thing. Uh, on the right side uh, are uh, some, I guess. Well, this is an LCD screen, but it's not totally dot matrix. Uh, from on the middle to the left side is uh, a dot matrix display, and on this side is uh, just custom LCD shapes for uh, your score and. Uh, little readout and stuff. So there are drills and tests and things to do. Um, I'm not sure which is any useful to anybody here. Uh, it's kind of cool. I mean, it's got a little picture of you know microscope, and it's asking you to label label the parts of the microscope, uh, and then gives you your score right here out of you know, 10 questions or 18 questions or how many. But, you know, it's, it's pretty limited. It's not a video game system. All right, let's try English. I hope you can see that. And, well, there's a test. I guess we'll do a drill, though. Yeah, okay. Let's go. 48 questions, I guess. Start. Uh, okay, so here's translation, I guess. What does ride mean in Japanese? Want. Goed went. Uh, what's the past tense of uh, go, I suppose? It's not bad. I mean, uh, a lot of my students make, them make, make a mistake. They say... Uh, uh, past tense of go is want, so uh, yeah, it's not bad. Even some of my adult students get this wrong. What's this? Is it a star? A mountain? A river? Well, what happens if we say it's a star? No, that's wrong. It's a river. Little teacher icon there. Sam is horny for Samuel. What? Okay. I guess time time ran out, and that's my total score: sixteen points. Well, that's cute. Well, it, it might be kind of fun for some uh, junior high school kids to try out their English or, or science knowledge or whatever. Um, so it, it's kind of interesting, an interesting way to uh, teach and reinforce uh, the lessons that kids have at, at school. But yeah, it's not a video game system, so uh, that's where I'll end this this video. Uh, yeah, there's the cartridge. This thing has something there. It's either, I don't know, battery backup, real-time clock, or another crystal in there. I'm not sure. A lot of these chips, there's another flash on the back, a lot of these chips are marked uh, ASCII Corporation. So I guess this was made by ASCII or or somebody, uh, some subcontractor for an essay. Yeah, so who knows what kind of hardware this thing's running on. Um, it's got uh, tiny little Torx screws that I don't have. Uh, screwdriver, a screwdriver for, so I'm not going to bother opening it up. Um, this is not that interesting. Um, what's interesting, and might be more interesting to all of you people, uh, is what Benessi released after this, the Pocket Challenge V2, which is this thing. Goodbye. Um,
this has a bigger screen as you can see it's a bit more normal aspect ratio for a portable game system um, and uh, as you can see it has similar cartridges this is again junior high school or middle school first year English um, and it's got a little bump like this which takes a single uh, AA battery so well, I'll show you what the the, uh, the English course is like um, there's also a, a well, shiny high school <laughs> test drill <laughs> high school uh, government exam uh, cartridge as well so hopefully you can see this okay it's got some nasty beeping and so let's try English drills all right so vocabulary okay so well it's grammar so how do you say in Japan correct what's this uh, okay well it's not not bad I mean it's obviously a pencil but uh, a lot of Japanese people especially kids think uh, oh it's called a pen so uh, maybe that's a pen. No. Pencil. Pencil. So it speaks to you. Um, um, well, here's a good one. What's the contraction of it is? I mean, even a lot of native English speakers get it wrong when they're writing, don't they? So, uh, let's see. Maybe this one? Of course it's wrong. No. It's IT apostrophe S. Okay. So... Read this. What's the word in in Japanese? Well, that's, that's easy, I think. Okay, again, a contra more contractions. Was no. What's okay? Well, I guess you understand. I mean, you, you see the point of this thing. Um. Anyway, so here's a cartridge. Here's the cartridge and. Here's a system with a bump on its back for a AA battery. Does this look familiar to you? Might remind you of the Wonderswan, maybe. Same bump on the back and uh, really distinctive looking cartridges. Uh, so yeah, this is Wonderswan Guts, just in a different shell with different buttons. Pretty interesting find, and people, I think, have discovered that on the internet already. Um, Here's a Wonderswan game, if you don't have one or don't know what the one looks like. So yeah, they are basically identical, identical cartridges. Um, and so if you take, if you wait a minute, I'll uh, carefully pry open this uh, uh, English cartridge. And here's the circuit board. Um, the cases are a tiny bit different for the cartridges. The, just where the slots and the uh, the tabs are for the plastic case on the outside, uh, they're two different thicknesses and different heights. So that's a little bit of a mechanical lockout between the Wonder Swan and this Pocket Challenge V2. But I mean, you can get it to work. So I've put the cartridge in with just a a card, a credit card or something to uh, give it some backing, some support in the back end. Yeah, the Wonder Swan turns on, and here you can see it is. Well, it faded for a second there. So there's some small incompatibility with uh, maybe contrast or the palette. Um, but I think I've tried this on a regular monochrome Wonder Swan, and it, it looked the same too. So it had nice clear uh, images. Apple. So same sound. Um, the button mapping is totally different uh, between this and the uh, Pocket Challenge. So uh, I think the Pocket Challenge has a button that does not exist on the Wonder Swan at all. So you can't do certain things. But you know that's pretty interesting. Um, pretty tricky, sneaky of uh, well whoever made this, <laughs> uh, the Wonder Swan to you know license out their hardware to different companies and it makes sense I mean this is I mean I don't mean, mean to insult the Wonder Swan or other you know even the Neo Geo Pocket Color but uh, they're they're both kind of crappy pieces of hardware 
I mean, this thing is horrible sound and no headphone port and it runs on one battery. So, I mean, it's efficient, energy efficient, but um, it is not a great game playing experience. Uh, well, uh, so that's basically it about this uh, Pocket Challenge. I'll, I, I just wanted to show this thing, the Pocket Challenge game running on the Wonderswan, uh, the real hardware. Uh, after this, I guess I'll, I'll just show you the, uh, what Wonderswan games look like really quickly. Uh, I don't mean to disrespect people who love the system, but my experience has been just negative with these. You know, uh, pretty crappy screen, just as bad as the Game Boy Color, horrible sound, uh, even though it could compete with like the PC Engine, just the way it comes out of this tiny little speaker, uh, and you need a headphone adapter. I mean, it's just just built down to a tiny, you know, the minimum price, uh, and as a result, it's kind of a poor experience. But that's kind of beside the point. One more reason why I rather dislike the Wonderswan. These cartridges are really finicky to get started. I mean, it's inserted and it powered on, but you gotta do this a hundred times. You kind of have to offset the cartridge just a little bit to the left from where it actually naturally slots in. Ah, what kid will want to do this? You know this came out after the Game Boy Advance, the Swan Crystal. All right, one minute later, finally get it going. Now that's looking a little bit better on camera than it is in real life. So this is Rockman and Forte for the Wonder Swan. And it's not bad, but... Ah, what's that sound? You know, this has a slight wavetable synthesis like the uh, PC Engine Turbo Graphics, but... Um, and I've heard it in an emulator. It sounds alright, but it is rather ruined coming out of this... Awful speaker, which distorts. Ugh, enough of that. Okay, let's turn off and try Makai Muda for Wonders Phone. Um, as you can see, the two Capcom games, maybe the, a couple of the only really good games on the system, apart from Homebrew. Does that work? Hallelujah. Although, listening to this horrible dirge, it sounds like Capcom outsourced the making of this game. I mean, those audio channels sound off too. Um, it's a, you know, kind of a cool, interesting game. I mean, it's. It's a unique version of uh, Ghosts and Goblins, or Ghouls and Ghosts, for a system. I mean, that's awesome. Could have been better, though. Oh. The javelin throwing sound. Or sorry, the uh, lance throwing sound is just some kind of staticky blur burbling. Kind of awful. Okay, I, I think it's about enough. You've, you've seen enough about of this game. You know, it's interesting and intriguing, um, but it is kind of the epitome of copying Nintendo and cheapness. I mean, after all. by Bandai. <laughs> Alright, that's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. See you later, guys.